And it's gotta be Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Color Commentary, where we give you views from a different side. Of course, I'm your host, Rashad Waters, owner and founder of Block Band Music and Publishing, a company that provides music and instruments to marching bands all across the nation. And obviously, we're talking about Incredibles 2 today, because as you can see, I'm dressed as Frozone when he's chilling without his eye, without his uh, powers and stuff. You can see I have the power of ice creation. Ice powers activate. Activate them. <laughs> Somebody is frozen right now. I can I can guarantee that with the power of Frozone. But yeah, we're talking about Incredibles 2, a movie that just came out here on Father's Day weekend. And uh, it's an animation movie done by Pixar. So before I get any further into it, let's go ahead and bring on our co-host, starting with Mr. Danny J. Quick. What's happening over there, sir? What's up, everybody? You know who it is. It's your boy, Danny J. Quick. I'm a red cheetah man, as you can see. This is me. I don't have any power. <laughs> I'm just fast and red. I don't know. I couldn't. I don't have a costume today. I, you know, I mean, I got some, but I'm just excited about the movie, so... Uh, yeah, uh, Incredibles 2, man, it was incredible. I know I'm usually the, the uh, what, are you, what am I called? The uh, contrarian. The contrarian. contrarian. You know, I'm usually the contrarian, but hey, this time I, I don't have much bad to say about it. I really liked it. I had a, had a great time, but um, we'll get into that. We'll get into that in a minute. So, all right. And uh, looks like uh, with the two and one over there, he and his wife teamed up together in order to, just like on The Incredibles, they teamed up to create an awesome costume in 15 minutes. <laughs> Mr. Chuck Taylor, what's going on there, sir? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Yes. When we started this meeting, I had a red shirt on. When we started this show, I am Mr. Incredible with dreadlocks. <laughs> but yes. Uh, I am so excited about this movie. This movie is awesome. But yeah, I'm a uh, co-owner of KFH Party Easy. We do parties of all kinds and all sorts. We are all amazing, and we can't wait to do more of them. So, but I can't wait to talk about this movie. This movie is so good. I don't know what Rashad's thinking, but it's so good. So, I've yeah. I've said nothing. Yeah, I'm, I going, have I'm said throwing it out there because I know it. I know what you're about to say. Other than. Anyways. Let's get to Other it. Other than I'm the CEO of a block band music and publishing, a company that sells music and instruments to marching bands across the nation. That is all that I'm thinking about. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so Incredibles 2 is the uh, smash hit uh, sequel to the uh, movie that came out in 2004, obviously called The Incredibles. Uh, this is a story about a superhero family. It's actually very similar to two uh, products produced by Marvel Comics. If you were to take the uh, Fantastic Four on one side and the other family, which is Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who are brother and sister, and smash them together, then you get the Incredibles. Uh, this this movie that came out this year, or I guess a couple days ago now, is the largest animation opening of all time. So Disney is just rolling in the money right now. Along with Star Wars and Marvel, this is another Disney creation related. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> I'm about to walk out. <laughs> Along with Star Wars and Marvel, this is another <laughs> Disney creation released at a time when Disney basically owns the movies right now. I mean, they did Black Panther. And that's pretty much all we need to talk about. But if we wanted to talk about something else, we could also say that they put out Infinity War. They put out Solo, which actually was a good movie. It didn't make as much money as they wanted to. But to start out and say, hey, we only made $125 million. We suck. Yeah, it's kind of well, it's still $125 million. <laughs> so still not that bad. Um, so Disney is really just destroying things right now. But it's interesting they're putting all these movies out all at the same time. Plus, we get Ant-Man and, uh, and the Wasp coming out in just a couple of weeks. Let's go ahead and get into this. Danny, how did this movie win? Oh, so many different levels. Um, Incredibles 2 
How many years has it been since the first movie came out? Was it 12 years? 14, 14 years. 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 They, 14. they managed to, first of all, okay, I'm trying to be brief. Jack Jack was the MVP of the movie, yo. This little MVP. baby. MVP. This little baby was so effective. He was cute when he was supposed to be cute. He was heroic when he was supposed to be heroic. He was every every scene that Jack Jack was in was like my favorite parts of the movie. Okay, Jack Jack. Was he also hated animals. He also, <laughs> yo, the setup, the setup with the raccoon eyes. The bandit. He hates the bandits. Right. Jack Jack looked at it. <laughs> He looked up at the TV and then he looked at the raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> See? That was great. That was that's great. exactly how racial that's exactly how racial profiling works right there. You see, <laughs> you see a black person on TV doing something, and you go out and say you look just like that person that was on TV. You must be up to no oh, good. God. That's how it works. <laughs> that's a brutal <laughs> Uh but no. All right. And, so, and he was a coon. <laughs> Oh gosh, you're reading too much into the movie, Rashad. You're reading too much into it. Too much. <laughs> okay, but but how they were able to pick up right where the last movie left. I was I was skeptical. Like I'm like, it's been 14 years. There's no way that they're gonna be able to like just pick it up, you know, with the same energy from um the underminer coming up. I am the underminer. Nothing I'm I'm beneath you, but nothing's beneath me. And then, like, they just went straight <laughs> into the action. It was so good. It was so good the way that the movie started. And I felt like like it took me all the way back to the last time I watched. I mean, I watch the movie every couple of months. But, you know, it took me right back to the last time I watched it. And I'm like, okay, I'm right back in it with these characters. Um, Elastigirl. They made Elastigirl look like she had been fighting crime her entire life. Yes. She was like, mm-hmm. she went in there like, like Batman. Uh, Captain America, uh, all of them, and then her, her using her powers, the, like with the bike and stretching and going in the tunnel. It was yo, it was so that whole sequence with her going out the first time to, um, you know, to stop the runaway train. Mm. Yo, it was so dope. I was I was enthralled. I was in the theater like I've never seen it. Before. Like how are you still showing me stuff that I've never seen before on TV? It was amazing. <laughs> Now I, I'll it take I, you know. Last episode we were talking about the Flash, and I hate Ralph Ralph Dibney. That's one part of the Flash that I do hate. This dude, I just yeah. stand him. Oh, he's trying. I'll take a last girl over over uh, Ralph Dibney or uh, what's his name? Uh, what uh, elongated man? Elongated man. Any time, <laughs> any day, anywhere. <laughs> Um, <laughs> last but not least, um, Edna Mode and Jack Jack. That whole that scene with her and him when when Robert came back and finally got some sleep. When he came back and Jack Jack was walking down the hall with his little little sucker, <laughs> <laughs> and, her, and she gave him the voice activation. I bust I bust out laughing oh, so hard. I did, yes, this jump was great. This that movie was. was I probably go on all night. Uh, with things that I like about the movie, but I'll give y'all y'all's time. Uh, Charlie, did you? What did you like about it? How did you? How did the movie succeed to you? It's funny that I actually wrote some notes for this one. It's like the things you said is like my main points. I was like the <laughs> raccoon and the baby fight, Jack Jack and the raccoon fight. Man, that was like masterpiece of a movie. Man, that that was the best part of the movie. That one and like you said, Edna and him walking um, <laughs> down the hallway. And basically being besties and everything <laughs> for one night. But Jack Jack, I mean, what he didn't have in the first movie, he definitely got it all in the second movie. Like everybody came out of there like just loving and just enjoying Jack Jack and just wanted to see him more and more. Because that mm-hmm. that raccoon fight was so funny, boy. I mean, I was laughing hard. Like hard laughing, like I mean real laughing, like tears crying. I'm like in a a, a crowded place in a recline. Down, well, just down the recline, just chilling, just busting out crying. Like, it's right. so funny. That raccoon but, was, you know, I would have, if it was, yes. as soon as he burst on flames, I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I was like that raccoon ain't left yet. I'm like, he just turned Super Saiyan. Like, what in the heck, bro? You a brave, you must really want that chicken. You must it really want brave. that chicken. 
<laughs> he was, I'm like, he didn't came off in flames, throwing things up in the air. I'm like, nah, I ain't fighting this one no more. So, but yeah, he was a tough raccoon. And then he came back at the end. He was still ready for more. So I was like, this raccoon what a death wish. I'm like, shoot lasers out his uh, eyes. The raccoon went to, he went to Cobra Kai, no surrender. <laughs> yeah, still gonna strike first. <laughs> but um, yeah, no. So Jack Jack to me was like the MVP, like you said, of the of the sh- of the whole movie. Um, but just kind of going, just how it was written, just you know, seeing the different roles of like, I mean, kind of went down the Civil War path. Like, you know, do we really want superheroes? Do we need them to protect us? Or should we kind of outlaw them and kind of seeing both sides of there, like seeing the superheroes, like the, the kids want to have powers. Nobody can do anything because they'll go to jail. Like at the beginning of the mm-hmm. movie, you know, they, you know, they save everybody, but only like the, uh, freaking, I call him, uh, Joe Markowitz, <laughs> the, uh, Markowitz. What's the rich guy. <laughs> His name was, um, Winston Dever. Winston yes, Dever. Winston the way he explained to them and broke it down, like, well, they only see this in what the media tells them. And that kind of just relates to so much stuff in real life. Like, half the time, we don't know what the heck is going on, only what CNN and Fox News and our outlets put out there. And that's why we just make our decisions based off of that. We never actually see mm-hmm. or try to research the main points of things. So we just kind of just like <laughs> throw up on everybody. Oh, I hate this. I'm so mad for this. This is wrong. Was like, well, we don't even know really what went on. Like, we just saw uh, these different outlets make something up and, you know, put their agenda on 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 the stamp on their stamp fake news. when they put it out there. What? Fake news media. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of those fake newses. But um, I like the villain. The villain to me was I was able to relate to her. She, it's kind of been like that for the last like three superhero movies like you know with thanos like you're able to kind of relate with thanos see his point of view understand him a little better as what he's trying to do he's just not like i'm the want to be the best and i've got to kill you like you know they used to make a lot of uh bad guys like now to kind of give them a, a lot more you know oomph when they with the characters right. you know yeah. see like her point of view is just hey like yeah i don't really think we need supers like dad and mom would have just went to the safe room Instead of sitting there in the bed and calling on the phone, they still be alive. Right. Like, right? That's, that, I mean, kind of that's it's kind of smart. Yeah, I'll probably yeah, I probably mean, had the phone in the safe room. You know, like yeah, that what makes sense to, to me? Like, go to the safe room and my phones are in the safe room, so I'm safe in there and I can call. So right. best of both worlds. But you know, that's just me thinking. You know, exactly. That's just my thought process. But you know, but, seeing her and I like the twist. I like them not just giving away the uh you know the bad guy off off gate a lot of you know kid children movies they just know you know the bad guy is before you even go to the movie so it's kind of seeing the little twist and seeing the kids faces like oh my god she's the bad guy it's like yeah i told you she was the bad guy like 30 minutes ago but <laughs> for you this is also for me to watch you just slow oh my gosh the screen slaver is her sister yeah, and she was she was freak she was a uh she was a beast. She was killing with them goggles and that technology. She had a lot of stuff going for her too. Because she was uh she was talking about some deep stuff about them screens. Yeah. Like we we might need to take some of that advice. Like, bruh, and they just start like just taking over people's minds watching TV. I mean, how many times we be sitting here watching TV? You got four right there. You mm-hmm. got four screens. I know. Right. I'm gone. <laughs> I can't. And I got one right here with my game on it. So I'm destroyed in every direction. <laughs> is going to destroy me. So I mean, I understand this. Like, yeah, the screen. Yeah, I would die. I'd be done. Die. But yeah, movie was great. It's an awesome movie. One of the best of the year. I say it's my second best outside of Black Panther. But. You know, go ahead, Rashad. I know I went over because I ain't gonna have no dislikes, so I made a little bit more time on my likes. Go. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and give the slow clap, and then speed up the clap because both of you guys made it. I think this is like other than Black Panther. I don't even think you did it for Black Panther. I think this is the only movie where both of you guys have actually only said good things. Because <laughs> like. All right, it's time to talk about the good stuff. Well, I liked it, but then there was this part that I just didn't like, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> the stuff that you like. So congratulations, you guys, for actually liking something. You did it. All the way through. Um, 
I agree with a lot. One one thing I, uh, you guys did say was the the animation itself. The animation was amazing to me. Uh, it's just so much detail. It's one thing to have these type of scenes in a real world environment, but in this movie, what everything that you're looking at, every single thing that you're looking at is imaginary. Somebody had to create every garbage can that was in the corner, every every hair that was on the raccoon, every cloud in the sky. I mean, so that level of detail, it was just really amazing. I was really impressed. You know, all the camera angles. I mean, it's not just a camera looking it down at something like all that spinning had to be duplicated by somebody with a computer. So uh, hands off to uh, hats off as it is to Pixar, Pixar for that. Um, and uh, we're going to be three for three here as far as Jack Jack and the raccoon. That, yeah, was definitely one of the best parts of it. Yeah, that raccoon was not going to back down. <laughs> but Jack Jack no. turning in, into fire, boy, that was crazy. Turning into fire and knocking the, the chairs out the way. Boy, that was everything about that fight was great. So I'm not going to even rehash it. Um, however, I will say one thing. You guys are both saying that Jack Jack was the MVP of the movie. I'm going to disagree with that because you're looking at the MVP of the movie right here. Mr. Frozone, Mr. Frozone was the one that put in all the work. He didn't get none of the credit. The Frozone is always the one like, okay, we're going to have our family issues. You go and save everybody on the subway. There's like, you know, 200 people on the subway. Don't worry about that. I mean, you think about it. Like in Last the Girl, her whole big scene was saving that train. But he had already done that. <laughs> 30 minutes ago, and all he had, all he got for his trouble was running away. <laughs> but um, let me see. He, he he saved the L train in the first scene. He saved the capital from being destroyed. He evaded capture. He convinced the Parr family to jo even join the mission. If it hadn't been for him, they wouldn't have even joined. He saved the kids, even though he got captured. He, yep. sa he saved them initially. And he, sh he saved the ship from crashing into the city. I mean, he did all the heavy lifting in the movie. And he gets very, new love, very little love. So, uh, Frozone, Samuel Jackson, even though your wife is yelling at you, I'm giving you credit. You're the MVP <laughs> to me. That's true. I didn't realize. That's true. You make a lot of good points. You make a lot of good points. Yeah. He's like the... He uh, was the Lando... He's like the MVP uh, when the Warriors won their first title on Tory. Uh, when, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, oh my gosh, freaking name! Uh, um, I don't remember his name. That's that shows that that's a perfect example. Six man, Andre Eagle Dollar. Yes, he's like Eagle Dollar. Like does all the hard trash work that nobody pays to do, and then yeah. you know get surprised at the end. That's that. You're right. I, I commend you on that, Mr. Frozo. Yes. And for all the people that don't know none of that, <laughs> he was like the Lando Calrissian. <laughs> You know what I mean? Lando Calrissian was the one that destroyed the Death Star in Return of the Jedi. But we're like, oh, Luke's got a sword made of light. Come on, get out of town, please. <laughs> all right. Uh, how did this movie fail, if, if, if at all? Uh, so let's go ahead and start with you, Danny. What do you have to say about it? Y'all can be real short. I know you're going to be because I got some stuff to say. I say to me, it was a good movie, but not incredible. Go ahead. The movie didn't fail to me. I think it was great. Uh, if I had to pick out some things, I would say just that there was no that we didn't meet Honey. I want to meet Honey. I want to see Honey on screen. I would like to see her character. Is she a super? Like, does she have powers? Does Honey have powers? I want to know. Like, uh, <laughs> yell at the husband. I would love to meet her going? and his family because they right. all said, you know, several times that they, you know, re could rely on his, you know, his experience as a family man. I want to meet his. I want to meet Frozone's family. Um, that would be dope. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say one of the things, the movie was so good that I forgot to look for the Pizza Planet truck. I, every time, every Pixar movie, I always <laughs> look for the Pizza Planet truck to see if I can find it. And the movie was so good that it made me forget to do that. So that's a, I guess that's a, <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, the dude, um, I wanted, one thing that I did want from the movie that I didn't get you know how I am about that. I can't. I want something to move. I don't get it. It makes me mad. Uh, but <laughs> um, the underminer. I wanted the underminer to tie back into something in the movie. Like I wanted him to either pop back up or them to catch him in the end. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he just never. He. I think he did get away. Didn't he get away? 
He got away. He got away. And, you know, nobody, you know, he just didn't. I, I wish they would have worked him back into the story somehow. Like, uh-huh. um, like Serta. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Sure. <laughs> like, like, he would have popped up, you know, and stopped the ship at the very end. Like he would have blocked the ship from hitting the, I don't know, you know, something like that. Was <laughs> um, um, and then I'll tie you into a lot of stuff I had to say. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, no, you good. You good. You you were perfect. And then uh, I want Violet and da- are Violet are their superhero names Violet and Dash? Is that what it is, or is that their actual names? Like they don't. Why don't why don't Both. they? They yeah, they both. Yeah, I guess that they need. I mean, because you know, it's it's ultraviolet, right? Ultraviolet is invisible, right? Is that what is that what it is? Ultraviolet is. Oh yeah, okay, okay, that makes sense. I get you. Ah, get that. I know that. I get. I guess whatever. <laughs> but uh, that was that was all for me. I mean, I, like I said, I really love the movie. But if I had to pick out something. It would be those things. Uh, what, what about you, Chuck? Or, or, or are you going next for shot? Mr. No, go ahead, uh, Mr. Incredible, go. Hmm. Nothing wrong with this movie at all. This movie was <laughs> awesome. Let me think. Is there something that I didn't dis- I dislike? I just. No. It was, it was just so good. It was just so good. <laughs> it's just such a good movie. I don't know. Okay. You can nitpick all you want to. If those things were in the movie, it wouldn't have made it any better. It just would have been another part of the movie. Exactly. Like it went. It, it's like basically like listening to you say those things. It's like yeah, those things they 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 could make some more sense, but it wouldn't have made the movie any better. Like, if I saw the old mm-hmm. guy again, I wouldn't have cared because yeah. I was already you know on one hundred when I saw you know all the people going, all the supers going crazy, the mom and daddy going after the, the kids, Jack Jack going through walls. You know the whole mysterious thing to getting the goggles off people. You know, ah, oh, it's just it's just such a great movie. It's a great ride. It's such a great Jack ride. Saved the family. Jack Jack with his multiple yes. powers, he saved the family. He did. He went right to his mama. He was like, "You gonna remember me, mama?" He was like, like crawling hey, over there. Oh, take that off. Smack that thing off his, her face with his telepathic brain, and she was like, "Oh my baby." He was Jack Jack was a beast. Jack Jack, that was my my guy. I like Jack Jack. My my little my little baby. Every time I look at him crawl on the floor, thinking he gonna do something crazy. No, so what you doing, Cam? You don't, you don't pick have... that up. Don't pick that up, Cam. No. <laughs> but next time I see both of y'all, you can pick it up. Your baby's like pew pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't working. Yeah, we're going to fart on you, but it's going to happen. <laughs> All right, so it looks like both of my peers here have been looking at the screens here, and then minds have been taken over. So let me um, just bring it back to reality. I thought this was a really good movie. Don't get it twisted. I really, you know, but to say it's the second best movie of the year, I wouldn't put it there. It's definitely better than uh, Tomb Raider. Uh, it's definitely better than, uh, I ain't going to stop this time. Because <laughs> I don't have nothing to change into. <laughs> I don't have no other clothes. <laughs> About to have a ton of views on this one. <laughs> so, um, all right, a small thing: the villain was obviously one of the wealthy people at the beginning. It's like the villain is always, if if it's a wealthy person that shows up at the beginning of the movie, they're obviously the villain. You know, it was always, it was definitely going to be the the dude or the sister, probably not both. As soon as she said, oh, as soon as she arched, she she cut her brother off and said they should have gone to the safe room. You're like, okay, she's the villain. So I don't know. That's a very, very small thing. I'm not even concerned about that. Her name Why was issue. Endeavor. Her lip her name was Evil Endeavor. Like it was in her name that she was the bad guy. I mean, oh, that's right. That's right. It is I forgot her name. Last name was Dever. Yeah, you're right. Evil Endeavor. So there even, you have it. Even that too. Um, so somebody should have figured that out. Jack Jack probably knew. <laughs> um <laughs> For me, it was not a good balance with the characters. Like to me, I really, I really would have wanted. How should I, I'm trying to say? I wanted them to add to the characters. Not. I felt like some of the characters that were important in the first movie got sidelined. Like I thought that um, Mister Incredible and Dash got sidelined in favor of Elastigirl and Jack Jack. So let me get into 
to it here. First of all, the very first time you see Mr. Incredible, he aided in the city getting destroyed. I mean, they, he was absolutely right. Like, if 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 he had just let uh, uh, Undermire get away, yeah, the city wouldn't have gotten destroyed the way they did, but it did. He tried his best, you know what I'm saying? But their main point was that every time that he does any type of superhero stuff, stuff gets destroyed. Okay. So he got a it's knock there. there. Then the next thing, because of that, he got sidelined as a superhero for almost the entire movie because they were scared he was going to destroy stuff. You know, so it's like he went from being the main guy in the first movie to just being kind of there in the second movie. I appreciate Elastigirl being there, hold on, hold on. but I wanted, I wanted, it's to, a plot. No, yeah, yeah, I didn't cut you off when you said nothing. That's oh, a plot God. of the movie. Like, you gonna hate the movie for having narrative continuity? Yes, that's what I want to say. Like, cause you okay. want to see him. Here's like, the next thing. As, Although um, he <laughs> failed in everything no he sense. did. <laughs> Although he and his daughter reached the understanding. Like, as far as the dude is concerned, like, you say, oh, you know, I'm trying to be a good dad and stuff. Like, they reached the understanding. I appreciate that. But he was never able to help her, you know, uh, with the boy. You know what I mean? Like, his whole thing was like, I'm trying to, I'll go ahead and take care of the family. And he wasn't good at that. Then, when he went to go west rescue his wife, he, was he couldn't at that. save his like he taught us he how to do math. Mr. Incredible failed pretty much at everything that he did. He put a you he know, put the so, baby again. I just felt like sleep. I just felt that his character got sidelined. Like I would have liked to have seen Elastigirl and Jack Jack succeed without having to sideline him. Same thing with Dash. Dash did nothing the entire movie. What is what is one thing that Dash did other than chase after the baby the entire movie? That's fine. Thank you. Dash, I mean, did, Dash did nothing. He he ran, he like, did his thing. Dash was one of the centerpieces of the first movie. But in this one, he just got completely sidelined. Like, I would have wanted to see all of the characters really succeeding for me. Um, he got the his other dad thing, from Daddy, the water. You kind of got it. What? 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 He his, dad. What his dad was about to die. He pressed that button. Yeah, he, that's what he did. Dash pressed buttons all movie pressed long. Button. <laughs> 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 he saved the old lady at the beginning of the show. Old lady about to be he gone. He did save the. Old, he did save the old lady. The That's right. And he wore and he did crowd control at the beginning. He did. He did what Flash does. He did exactly what Flash do on on Justice League. Move people out the way. Move people out the way. Crowd control. Around the sideline stuff. He don't really fight. But he it's just such feet. a difference between. It's such a difference between how he was like a like one of the main people in the first movie, and now he's just got sidelined. You know what I mean? Again, I don't dislike the movie. I just thought that they could have done better with balancing the characters. Um, the other thing, uh, Daddy, you kind of touched on this a little bit. They, I feel like the movie missed so many opportunities for payoff. I'm talking to you, Charlie. <laughs> like, here's what I meant. Like, every character in the movie struggled with something. Every single one, well, almost everybody struggled with something, and none of these things were present at the climax of the movie. Okay, Mr. Incredible and Dash both struggled with new math, right? Like they have, uh, and that reminded me, that was funny to me, because, Charlie, I remember sitting down with Monica working on math, and I'm like, what is this? Why did they change math? Like, I was laughing so hard. Like, like, this. Like, this, I'm like, this is so real. Like, what, the, what is this? this nonsense? But anyway... Both of them, like, they struggled with new math, right? So they spent, like, a lot of time trying to do that. So it would have been kind of nice, like, somewhere at the, at the climax that either Dash or Mr. Incredible, like, oh, that's so-and-so, and use that, show that they have accomplished that. Nope. Violet struggled with the boy seeing her in costume, right, and then not remember her, right? That was her main thing. He could have been present somewhere at the climax. He could have seen her again in costume and been like, instead of like running away, be like, oh, wow, you're so beautiful. Or just play some type of role in the climax. Well, that actually did play, a, that, yeah, so that did play a climax. You remember when they were all going to the movie theaters, right? And they were about to go that in. That wasn't not the climax. Yeah, it, was, the, it was the end of the movie. End of the movie. That's well, called, that not the climax. It was like right after the climax. But they brought it back that's around. Called, that's called they epilogue. That's that's okay. the end. <laughs> the movie Anyways, is over. It was right after point. the climax. So they still brought it back around. Come on now. They got him out the car, told him to get some popcorn. And the new math, no. I'm going to interject on the new math. But the, I feel like they didn't do that because they would have had to teach. Like in order for that joke to pay off, they would have had to teach the audience new math 
you know, at the beginning. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I guess you're right about that. <laughs> that wasn't going to work. I agree with that. What? I agree. Right. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, Decker, like the guy that helps him out on the side, he appears at the beginning of the movie, right? Then Mr. Incredible makes a phone call to Decker asking for his help to help him with the board. He just wiped his memory. And then nothing comes of that. You never see Decker ever again. Okay. Uh, hey, Mr. Right. Incredible. Struggled. You do see Decker but he again. Did, he played. There's no role. Mr. Dr uh, Incredible struggled with uh, saving the day without breaking stuff. That was his main thing. It was like, we don't want you to out there because basically if you out there saving the day, you're going to break something. Okay. So that's cool. That wasn't but then he never he never overcame that. The it only thing that he succeeded in doing is diverting the ship while he was underwater. So he never overcame that. It wasn't a struggle for him. He wasn't trying to overcome that. He was he was saying, "This is me. This is how I am." And he's trying to embrace that. He knocks stuff over. He's indestructible. He that wasn't a yeah. struggle for him to overcome. And he, it and was he, a struggle also, because that was he's, preventing he's, him he's from doing what he wanted problems. to do. Mr. Incredible's for the big problems. You guys have been like watching them screens again. Listen, he's for the big problems, bro. So he comes in, the heavy lifting stuff, and that's when he comes in. And regardless of that, only thing that they want to elast girl basically there first just to kind of pave the way so everybody else could join in and help. So it's not, it wasn't saying that he wasn't going to be able to do his thing. It's just like, hey, we need to win the crowd back. Let's go ahead and massage them so they don't see all the destruction. They see somebody doing some cool stuff, and then everybody else can come back in, and it's okay because they don't change the law. So anybody can do whatever you want to. Besides what the these are called, these are called, these are called payoffs. These are called setting up something at the beginning of the movie so that it makes some type of difference. Like in the first movie with Syndrome, like uh, their main thing, Edna said, no cakes. Like that was a big, like she said a couple times, no cakes. So what was one of the things that happened to Syndrome at the end of the movie? His cake got sucked in and that was a part of him being taken out at the end. That's a payoff. What I'm saying is this movie had multiple opportunities to set up things like that and they just did nothing they didn't anything with that the underminer just like you were talking about the underminer he showed up he took all the money and then you never see him again with void he struggled with uh i mean she she struggled with her powers like the whole time and then here you go audience go ahead and look at me because these guys are whack here void she never gained confidence over her powers like it would have been nice if uh, Miss Incredible was like, hey, I believe in you. You can get me up there. You can do the thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, she literally saved her at the end by controlling her powers. But did she? Oh, she did. She just zapped her one time. It no, needed her. It needed Miss Incredible to say, I believe in you, Void. You can do this. That well, was the payoff that was needed. She needed to believe in herself, and she did. You're wrong, Rashad. Rashad oh, she did. Was Time. Take all your notes and shove it. <laughs> See, um, Jack Jack gets a new uniform, right? And it helps the kids to keep. Only thing that her, his new uniform does is to help the kids, is to help keep Jack Jack from getting them discovered. Other than that, the uniform didn't serve any useful purpose in the battle whatsoever. And here's the last thing Jack Jack struggled with the raccoon, right? Like, that was hilarious. That was one of the best parts of the movie. I would have loved at the end of the movie, instead of the woman like falling and the last girl saving her, that somehow the woman fell and like fell into the forest. And then she came across the raccoon and the raccoon started going ham on her. Like that would have been awesome. That would have been payoff. And to me, these are things that they just missed. So I just thought it was a good movie, but it was far from lacking incredible. So that's me. So let's go back to this. Danny, should people see this movie? See it several times. I don't know what all of this stuff Rashad is talking about. He over here out of his mind. He been screen slaved, um, screen slaved from somebody. <laughs> this movie was great. I laughed from the beginning to the end. I enjoyed it. Uh, um, it hit all the the right emotions for me. Um, I think, but for y'all, for the viewers, tell me this. I think Jack Jack. If Jack Jack was on the Avengers. They wouldn't have lost the Infinity War. Jack Jack, <laughs> Jack, Jack had too much power. He would have took Thanos out. So if if y'all answer me in the comments, do you think Jack Jack would Jack Jack versus Thanos who wins? Wow, 
I think that I think that they would have started disappearing, and then all of a sudden they would have just stopped disappearing. Can you can you can you just think about Thanos trying to throw Jack Jack over the mountain, just like little one, just like <laughs> him just trying to throw Jack Jack and getting like destroyed, like getting shot in the face with lasers, like turn to like demon baby, yeah. <laughs> just flying, pick him up with his mm -hmm. mind, yeah. It's over, Thanos. You don't want none of Jack Jack. Over for Thanos. He would have kept throwing the baby over, and the baby would have kept appearing next to him. Like, what? Yep. He would have yeah, made like 10 babies. He would have made like 20 right. of themselves just like attack Thanos at once. So, <laughs> so, so Dr. So Strange should people, part. Should people see this movie, uh, Charlie? Heck yeah. Yes. Get on. If you ain't seen it, you need to go see it. I'm about to go watch it again. Maybe tomorrow. I gotta go matinee. It's summertime. Take the kids to let's go see another movie. Yeah, I spend my money on my children to go watch uh, Incredible, and I happily do it over and over again. Don't bootleg this. And, uh, go, ahead. go check it out. It's a great family film. Everybody will enjoy it. Even if you don't have a family, go enjoy it. Just you know, sit over in the corner somewhere so you don't look weird. But uh, get on, go on out there and check it out. <laughs> go ahead and give your clothes in there, uh, Mr. Taylor. Oh, but yeah, I'm... You know, we're a KFH party easy. We do parties all over the place. We don't have anything major coming up right now. We're just doing individual parties. So, but just be prepared. We will be back doing the buyouts and the big parties soon. Um, so, we got a couple of movies we're thinking about later on. If y'all have some suggestions of big movies that you guys might want to attend and have some parties, throw it in the comments. We'll definitely take that under advisory. And I'll see you guys on next next go around. We got Jurassic Park, Jurassic World next next uh next week. So ah! it's coming. Yeah. Oh, I thought we would. That T Rex never. I thought, we, never would, done. I thought yeah. we were doing uh and Man in the Wasp. We got to wait again. Gosh, the dinosaurs. All right, Danny, yes, dinosaurs. go ahead and give you a closing. Go ahead and give you a closing spiel here, man. Oh, uh, I appreciate y'all, man. Like I said, I had a great time with this movie. It was uh. It was amazing. I'm going to go see it again. I'm going to go take the kids to see it again. I actually had to miss a couple of parts because the baby girl, she had to go to the potty and we're trying to keep her potty trained. So I had to take her out. And then so I'm going to have to go back. I missed actually missed the very end of the movie. So I didn't see that part that y'all talking about with the uh, with the raccoon coming back. But I will see it next it time. It didn't come back. It, it, right. Right. You saw what we saw. <laughs> well i'm gonna go back again i'm gonna try to spot out the pizza planet but uh i had a good time i appreciate y'all coming make sure you subscribe to the vibe but until next time stay vigilant my friends i'm out well for the discerning movie watchers who are not there with just like seven or eight little kids um i thought the movie was good movie is it a must watch for the um if, for the thing, I'll say if you like if you like babies, you'll love this. Like seriously, like Jack Jack is great. Like he's really really a great part of this movie. So I think there's a lot of people that will really really love this movie. You know, so I'm not going to tell you not to see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a see for yourself um, because I think that if you see it for yourself, a lot of people real will really like this movie. Um, the animation is very well done. Uh, overall, the stories are great. So I'm not against the movie. I just thought it, it could have been better. You know, it's definitely not top two better than Infinity War, better than um, Deadpool, you know, type of... De better than Deadpool? Come on, please, get out of town. That's why Charlie's phone hung up on him, because the phone couldn't even agree with him talking about this is better than Deadpool. <laughs> anyway, again, we've been Color Commentary. Thank you again for watching our whole show as we banter and talk, and hopefully we agree with some of the things that you've said. So... Uh, list your comments there. Let's, uh, you know, answer Danny's challenge there and see how Jack Jack could have uh, uh, fought against uh, Thanos. <laughs> Perhaps he could have uh, welded the storm. What is it, the storm stormbreaker? <laughs> no, no. You know what, Danny? Mm -hmm. That it, it it never would have worked. Why? You know, because Rocket's in the movie. Oh, Jack Jack versus Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Jack would have demolished Rocket. That would be so hilarious. <laughs> I don't know about that because I'm pretty sure that Rocket would have just shot the baby. I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's got a weapon for that. 
whose baby is this? It's about, I'm about to murder this baby. Yeah, so it never would have worked. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, make sure to check out our comments. Uh, please give us a like. Look at the description so you can um, see our other movies. And again, this is Color Commentary, where we give you views. Um... I literally have nothing for this. I mean, last week I did you know, like views from a, like a cloak and dagger side. I've done views from all kinds. I threw all my ice, so I don't. I, I got one piece of ice on the ground, but it's it's it melted now. So we just views. <laughs> don't you got a diaper around somewhere? You both, y'all. I know you got a diaper somewhere. My baby's a potty train. <laughs> a potty train. I ain't got no more diapers. <laughs> views from a potty train side. Peace. <laughs> and it's gotta be Sentimental's project That's the only thing that's soothing my soul Of course we cannot finish our show Without giving our shout out to fathers uh, We sang for the last one for the mothers But seeing as how we're not going to be singing Papa was a rolling stone Although Danny just walked away <laughs> Maybe he is a rolling stone I don't know <laughs> Hey, it's the stone rolled back. <laughs> we felt it would be great to just go ahead and give a tribute uh, to fathers. And so fathers are, are great, man. Um, it's like it's nothing like your dad to really be able to give you some advice, sometimes be able to tell you something in a way that nobody else can tell you. I know for me, for my father, like I've molded myself you know, so much of myself off of him. You know, he used to get up and, and go to work every day wearing a suit. And so um, when I was doing that type of work, uh, office work, I, that's what I did. Even when I worked at a job where I didn't have to wear a suit every day, I, I did because I wanted to be sharp and professional and look my best like him. You know, I always try to project my voice and speak uh, authoritatively and be conscious of the things I'm saying and use a good vocabulary and not cuss and be a good person in general. You know, these are things I got from my father. Um, for those of you who know me and for those of you who don't know me, my father was in an accident when I was two years old that left him paralyzed uh, from the neck down. And he was told that he would never be able to walk again, that that would be it. Um, and yet he fought his way through that. And he, after that, he taught for 30 years, walking around. <laughs> and for me, that is something that has taught me to a true uh, perseverance through everything. The fact that no matter what happens to me, I feel that I can fight my way through it because, uh, because of the things that I've learned from my father. So happy Father's Day to all the fathers, especially my dad. Danny, you want to add anything to that? Absolutely. I can attest to Rashad's father being always in the suits because he taught at my school actually uh i i didn't know know uh, mr waters person personally but i always would see him in the hallways with his with his nice suits on and uh, i do know that <laughs> they teach the young men um he was one of the one of the teachers who who did teach the young man how to be gentlemen and um and uh that that was awesome but my father uh danny danny thomas quick uh he was a, a rough man but he 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 taught me to work hard and he taught me to be versatile and um and i and i love my father and he and he's just been great to me as i've been an adult i can appreciate him more now than i did growing up but um i will say that i i i, I believe i got the best parts of my parents and i i love him and i appreciate him and happy father's day and to all the rest of the fathers out there and um all the people who are parents i have four children myself Rashad's gonna uh, eventually, we're gonna get Rashad some. We're gonna go to Walmart and get Rashad some kids, and uh, <laughs> with but, superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> but we thank you for joy uh, for joining us. Happy Father's Day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. What about you, Charlie? What do you have to say about that? Well, I want to make sure I say Happy Father's Day to my dad. He's been, uh, you know, a big impact in my life. Um, uh, my dad, Charlie Taylor Sr., my um, junior. But, uh, you know, he's shown me, you know, how to be accountable, you know, how to be a man, how to make sure, you know, you give everything for your family, no matter how you, how you feel about it. Um, kind of take yourself out of the equation. He's always done that for me. Um, he's always provided for us, made sure that we had the best or had things that we needed, um, any 
football, any sports related things that me and my sister did growing up. My dad made sure he worked. He wasn't able to come to all the things, but he worked his butt off to make sure we were able to, you know, have those um, different avenues to grow and to learn. Um, you know, he's always been there for me. You know, he's a quiet guy. Most of my, most of you guys know he's pretty quiet. Probably don't talk to you guys that much, but you know he's he has a lot of insight and uh, he's an onion. He's an onion. Just gotta peel him. You gotta peel him. So as I grown up, I got a little older. You know, I'm starting to understand my dad a little bit more and have him a little more of our conversations. So I definitely see what you mean, Tori. Uh, you know, kind of just being able to respect him a little more now that you're an adult and you're in those situations as, um, no, as a father, as a father. Um, myself, you know, being in those situations with my kids and my family, my wife, and having to make sure I do whatever I need to do to make sure they're taken care of correctly. So I definitely want to shout out my dad. Thank you, dad, for being there for me. Thank you for loving me. And, uh, you know, happy Father's Day to you and all the dads, Mr. Waters, Uncle Danny, and all the dads out there. Thank you for being a real man. We appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Deuces. I'm out. Happy Father's Day. You know, happy Father's Day to you. Happy Father's Day. And it's gotta be Sentimental's Project. That's the only thing that's soothing my soul. Turn on the TV to.